Hey everyone, Jessica, Pretty Prince Paper. Today I'm talking about tracking your energy. I think a lot of times people think about tracking their productivity and tracking sleep and things like that, but I wanted to start tracking my energy so that I could manage it rather than manage my time. I've known for a long time that I am a night person. I work with a lot of folks who are naturally way early morning people and working from home has offered me the opportunity to kind of work within the cycle of my own energy. And I wanted to track a little bit more about what causes those dips and I tried a couple different things. Maybe it'll help you too. I'll show you. This is going to be in my bullet journal edition two. You can see my review of the actual notebook in a different video, but I have been loving this. So in here, I have my dailies and each day I want to track on the side here in this daily time chart, things like my symptoms, my wellness, my energy levels, if I'm noticing that I'm feeling really in flow. So I kind of track that down here. You can see here, like tired at 2.30. I'm in flow, working on stuff at four. So trying to capture some of those pieces throughout. Tired, three o'clock and was doing a pretty good job of it over time. And then I wanted to get a more visual representation about what that chart means and looks like. So this week I started tracking it in a more visual way and I thought, okay, I can squeeze this in here in my unused space at the top. So I started marking throughout the day and this is like the, I think 12, 3, 6, 9 PM. And I could follow the pattern dipping around three o'clock like I had noted earlier and rising continually until I go to bed around 12 or 1. <laughs> that is not surprising to anybody who follows me on Instagram. So on Tuesday, same pattern, that dip in the afternoon. And then I thought, okay, this is kind of getting in the way, but it's kind of affirming to see that my intuition about myself is pretty accurate. You can just see the the rise and fall. So then I tried to do something else a little bit more aesthetically pleasing that worked within the system that I already had. And that brings me to today or yesterday where I started tracking it in the background of my hourly. I had already marked the times on the side and I could just kind of every time I made an entry, I could log the point to which I felt like my energy was high or low. And in that I'm using the, the lightest color Tombow brush pen in N89. It's the lightest one so that it can kind of blend into the background and I can still see the pen laying on top of it. So I'm doing this and then once you turn it over, you can see the chart on its own throughout the time throughout the day. And familiar, there's a rise, fall, and then rising, rising, and I have to fill this in because it was going up until the end of the night. This all kind of started because I was reading Essentialism, and this is one of the charts that was in the book about managing your energy and how essentialists look at paring down all of the non-essentials so that they can spend their limited amount of energy channeled into the things that they deemed important. And this really represents that for me. I don't agree necessarily with driving all of my energy to one thing. That is not the way I want to live. I live for a variety of things, a variety of causes, and I'm not about to just channel into one but I do want to pare down some of these things and manage that energy when it is the most effective, then I can make the highest contribution. And um, I'm learning that through my energy tracking. So what have I learned from tracking my energy? There's a couple of things that are reaffirmed, but now I can kind of articulate it and I can plan around what I know my energy to be. So one of those things I learned was that Monday mornings is kind of my gearing up to enter the week. Um, Kendra Adachi from The Lazy Genius talks about how routines in the morning are kind of your on-ramp to your day that you kind of want to be having. And I think about Mondays as the same thing for the entire week. So Monday mornings are times where I schedule things that are kind of medium level of energy and thinking. I'm not going to do my best strategic thinking on Monday mornings as much as I would love to do deep work. So it's more like physical things, like getting my plan set for the week, tidying up my desk space maybe and also maybe one-on-ones check-ins um, conversations that really start getting my brain into the week so that's what I know about Monday mornings and then what I also know is that there's that dip in the afternoon 
and um, this semester it's really aligned with when I stop teaching for the day and I have to recover. There's this like drop right there. So I'm not scheduling anything that's really intensive at that time unless it's a quick like check-in with one of the student employees or something like that. And then what I do know is that I get into flow around 4 to 6 p.m. for work stuff. So if I really want to get in deep to grading or strategic planning, 4 to 6 is when I'm going to try and do that. And then for the rising energy at night sometimes, that's when I do really great work in processing email that I schedule to send the next day. My coworkers and, and the team, they're really great about knowing that that's when I do work so they can see my email at night and not feel like they have to respond or do any work at that time. But just to make that a little easier, I will schedule that through Gmail. Very easy. Schedule send next day. And then at night is also when I do some of my creative stuff. So I will get an idea at nine or 10 o'clock at night and I'm like, I have to do this. I have to organize my, my craft shelf. I have to start this painting. Oh, I got this cool idea. Or I'm thinking about planning uh, parts of my finances for the future. And that's, I get started at 10 or 11 PM. And you know what? I've learned to fight that a little bit less. Do I want to be staying up till two in the morning? No. <laughs> so I'm trying to be accepting of kind of my patterns while also giving myself that restriction. Again, I can run on my own energy levels because I don't have to take care of children or a dog or anybody else except for me. And that's a very different situation than maybe what you have to deal with as a mother or as a caretaker and what have you. So see where there is wiggle room, see where there are schedule opportunities that you have to plan around your own energy. Uh, and hopefully that can align a little bit better with the kinds of things that you need to do. Um, I try not to schedule things that are during that window of flow so that I can kind of use my energy when it's at its best. The story that I like to tell myself was that I couldn't really do consistency or routines because, oh, I have to go with my energy and really um, feed into that. But what tracking my energy over the last couple of weeks has taught me is that there is some consistency there. There is a rhythm and now I can use it to my advantage and use my energy in the best way possible. So hopefully this gives you some tips. I would love to hear how you might be adjusting this into your own schedule, into your own planner or whatever questions that you have leave them down at the bottom. I'd love to answer and engage with you. Otherwise, uh, if you liked it, subscribe, share, comment, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.